What will you do if a man is about to leave? Most of my people are about to die. They ask for human beings to bring me this person. And then the will is given. Take this one, take this one, and take this one. When Jesus was about to depart this earth, if you go to most churches now, they are celebrating what they call the ascension. When Jesus was about to be airlifted from this earth or to be raptured, in Acts chapter 1, he called the disciples to him, and I'm preaching from, some of you have this book, but you are not using it. The last but one chapter of this book, Activating Your Season, which is very controversial. So if you don't have it, or you have it after this, you can go and read it. In Acts chapter 1, from verse number 4, and say, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. So it's like a man is living and is giving you a will. And he said, I promise you something. And that's something I promise you. This is what you need to do to execute it. So a will is just a piece of paper. You need to enforce it. So he said, he assembled the disciples, he commanded them. This, at this particular time, there were about 500 people there, according to Apostle Paul. There were about 500 people there. And he said, they should not depart from Jerusalem. Oh, they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he had heard of me. Now verse 5, give me the new King James. When Verse 5, for John truly baptized you with water. In other words, you have received water baptism, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. He's talking about days. So now the disciples, as we know, had to wait for 10 days from ascension for the Holy Spirit to come. Now, he said, with not many days from now, I want to put it on record that somebody needs to make the next 10 days a decision point in their life. You didn't hear me. Somebody want to spend the next 10 days doing what I'm about to talk about because, see, let me tell you this. Seasons don't change because you are old. Seasons change because you receive a word. I will explain. The word of, don't change the scripture, right? That the word is, um, um, first Kings 17, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, go to the brook of Cherub. I've commanded a raven to feed you. That word changes season. Then another time it was there said, the river was dried and God said, the word of the Lord came to him and said, go to the widow of Zarephath. I've commanded her to feed you. Now anytime you hear a particular word is the word that you believe that changes your season. When God wants to change your season, it's not about okay, I'm waiting for Christmas. I'm waiting for rain. I'm waiting for this. No. The word of God that is received is that tender determined season. So if you look at this thing critically, that they said Jesus said that you received the baptism of John. No problem with that. But I'm going, and there's a promise from the Father which will come to you not many days from now. Verse 6. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Will you add, and many people have read this scripture to mean that they asked Jesus, are you coming to give us the kingdom? Are you coming to give us what you said you would give us? They said, will you now restore the kingdom? And when you read this, my book, I told you that the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is not a place in heaven, but it's a position in a life. The kingdom of God is about the protocols and the kingdom of heaven is about what? The structures. The patterns that you need to use to assess God. So when I said that, will you now restore the kingdom to Israel? They're expecting that he will just do some magic one and the, the um, herald and the Romans and God will find and they will take over. But Jesus said in the next verse, verse 7, look at it. He said that, he said to them, it is not for you, this is what kicks me, to know the times or seasons which their father has put in his own authority. Don't change it. And if you want to understand this, read this book. He said, it, it's not for you to know. It, is it my season to marry? Is it my season to give birth? Is it my season to break through? He said, as for that one, it is not for you to decide. Why? Galatians 4 said, the hair, as long as he's a child, is brought under um, teachers until the time determined by the father. 
So it's the Father or God who says that, let me do this for this person. But Jesus was going to tell them what to do to activate your season. He was not going to tell them that when I come back, people read this scripture and they say that Jesus was referring to a second coming. No, read it very well. He's never said anything that nobody knows when Jesus will come. They were not asking him, when will Jesus come? When will your second coming be? You read it well. He will say, will you now restore the kingdom? And he said, nobody knows the times and the seasons. But that one is determined by the Father. May God determine your season for you now. Yeah. So you see, we can pretend to human beings, but we can't pretend to the Father. Uh, we are in 117, so it's confusing me. James 1, no, we are in 17. James 1, 17. All good and perfect comes to us from above. Through the Father, who is the creator of all life. Hebrews will also tell you that um, God is the Father of the spirits. Can I tell you this? Oh, God. You've read this scripture before, right? Sometimes I like to teach to let you know that if you read the Bible, don't understand. If a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes his enemies to be at peace with him. Why did he say that he will kill those enemies? Because there are some people God will never kill them, no matter how you pray. You might be at peace with them. Oh, yet yeah, then God can kill them. <laughs> If a man's ways pleases the Lord, I thought if your ways pleases him, the next thing he will do is that he'll finish that person for you. But he's not going to finish that person for God. There are some people who have a covenant with God. God can't finish them. The best he can do is that he can tell them that, please, go and help the person. May God speak to your enemy to be at peace with you. Amen. You didn't hear that one. An example is Laban. When Laban wanted to attack Jacob, God didn't kill Abraham because by virtue of their bloodline, they had a covenant. All the, Abraham took wife from there. Isaac took wife from there. Jacob, you are going to take wife from there. You to your child go and take wife from there. If I kill this man, how would the wife come? So God came by night and warned Laban. Don't, don't go and attack the man. If you attack him, I'll deal with you. Just go and speak peaceably unto him. So there are some people. If you are praying that they should die, forget it. <laughs> Please, are you here with me? Some of us, if God has killed us, we will not be here preaching. Because some time ago, we were enemies of society. <laughs> May your way that please the Lord cause your enemies to be at peace with you. Amen. Your, your amen is not good at all. That is when the one who doesn't like you and cause you and say, take this $50 million and use for it. Then he would tell you that he was there and a woman came and said that this is my life savings. Take it. And he said, God bless you. He said, don't look at me and tell me God bless me. I don't like you. I said, if you don't like me, why do you bring the money? God said I should bring it to you, but me, I don't like you. You are fake. And he, and he took it. I'm fake. But he said, God don't say bring the money. You see, that is how best God can bless you. Because there are some people, if God cannot even change their mind, that doesn't mean that God should not use them to bless you. I hope you are understanding me here. May your enemies become a blessing to you. Amen. May those who speak evil of you be the one to speak good of you. Amen. May they be the one to open the door for you. Amen. May they be the one to give you an opportunity. Amen. Your amen is not good at all. Amen. So moving on, they ask, will you now restore this kingdom to us? And he says, nobody knows the time and the season. You can't just, you won't just get and say, I feel there, may you, you are a joker. I feel there, you are a joker. So they wait, I will not do it by 31st, when I'm 40 years, when I'm 30 years. That's why you are failing. You can't determine your season, but there's something you can do that will make you know your season. And that is what I taught in this book, activating your season. So when they said, will you now restore? He said, that one, you don't know the time and the seasons, but it's the father who has authority for it. Now in verse 8, he took us to what we need to do. Which in the next 10 days will happen. He says that, and we shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you become a witness. May you be a witness. Amen. May you witness the buying of an aeroplane. May you witness the pregnancy. 
may you witness the wedding. He said, you see, let me tell you, whatever you have not witnessed, you can't talk about. Is Pastor David around? He's not around. Let me say it. Don't tell him. When we were young, if Pastor David, you can't find Pastor David, my mom would say, let's watch TV. Seven o'clock news, you know where he is. You know why? Seven o'clock, is likely to bring Rollins that he's gone somewhere. And among the crowd, you see Pastor David there. <laughs> If you meet him, ask him. So you watch the news. When you watch the news, as you are going through the crowd, you see that some dark person, me, smallest guy is in there. They will know where he's been. They will look for him. He, he was so, he was like that. He will follow that man. If he hears, he will leave school and go there. It was only God who turned him to become a pastor. He wanted to be a security man. Oh, that is how God can change people. I'm not talking to somebody here. I know sometimes when I teach some of these things, it shocks some of you because you read this Bible. You say, is there a second coming? Is there a second coming? Nobody knows the time Jesus will come. Says who? Who does he know? We all know he's coming very soon. He said the signs are there. Wars, rumors of war, unthankful, ungrateful. All these things are happening. So we know that the time is close. But the day and the time, we don't actually know. But that is not what Jesus referring to. He said, if you want to know the season... It shall come to pass. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you will what? You shall be what? Witnesses of, to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, in uttermost part of the earth. How can you tell somebody God will bless you when you are not blessed? See, I'm a witness. I, I, I was talking to the youth today. I was telling them, that, listen, I'm a witness to what God has done with young people. When I met my wife, she was 14 years. Pastor David himself was around, I mean, when he became man, he was around 14, 15. Pastor Charles was around 15, 16, 17 when he joined. Shout out, how old were you when you joined Bridge? You were 22. Oh, no, no, no oh, that's one. <laughs> I mean, I had people who came in very young, very small. I mean, young, in, in their teens. Me, myself, I was 19 when I started preaching. And today, I can look at their life and see what God has done with them. Now, let me tell you this. Because I know what has, God has done with people, I'm bold to say God can bless you. Because I've been a witness to see what God can use people to do. But when you have not been a witness of a thing, when you are talking about it, it doesn't hold power. May you witness breakthrough. Amen. Like, you know, just like you are there, now you see God bless one person here. And then we say, praise the Lord, God just blessed me. I'll buy a car for everybody. And when you go, say, I was there when the man of God prophesied and he bought the car. Hey, this man is powerful. Now you are a witness. So he said, you shall become witnesses of who? Me. May you become God's witness. Amen. I didn't hear you. Amen. I did not hear you. Amen. But you see, the witness comes about because you have the Holy Spirit and not just the Holy Spirit, but you have the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, you shall become witness of me in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and the utmost parts of the earth. Now, verse 9. Thank you, Jesus. Now, when he had spoken this thing while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Wait a minute. So, the last word Jesus said before he vacated to heaven was, you shall receive power. You shall receive what? We shall receive what? Power. Now look at somebody. Do you have power? Do you know? Do you know why the unbelievers don't don't value us? We speak in tongues that doesn't carry power. Because most of us don't wait on God. The disciples had Jesus say, "Wait for me in the upper room, until I endure the power." And they had to wait for ten days. But the day of Pentecost, by Acts chapter two, the day of Pentecost came. There were only one twenty people in the room. My question was that, where were the rest of the people? I'm sure they went to buy watch. Eh? Their boyfriend called them. They had to do something. And when the Holy Ghost came, they didn't meet them. They didn't encounter the Holy Spirit. Now, how does the Holy Spirit work in you to change your season? In Paul said, and most of you hear me, you get confused about this. There are different kinds of tongues. Say different kinds of tongues. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, tongues of men and tongues of angels. So there's the tongues of men that I speak this language you understand. And there's tongues of angels. And the tongues 
that first came down the door of Pentecost was the tongues that people can interpret. It. But there's another tongues that Paul spoke about that he spoke about in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 14, which is the one that they received also that changes seasons. Let's read it. 14. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but expect that you may be prophesied. Two. He who speaks in tongues, he that speaks in, he that speaks in, does not speak to men, but to. So what is he talking about? So someone say, tongues, at earlier tongues they spoke, people could hear and understand. Paul said, this tongue, you don't speak to men, you speak to God. Why? Because when I speak to you, you can't help me. Let's read. But no one understands him. But how be it in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Do you know that most of us don't speak in tongues? We can't be, you can't speak in tongues for 24 hours. You've not done that before. So there are lots of mysteries. What is a mystery? Something that you don't understand. That must be revealed or be unveiled. He does not speak in tongues. However, he in the spirit, he speaks what? Mysteries. Now, Tongue speaking is prophecy. Let's read. Verse 3. But he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and whatever. So now, if I say, God bless you, are you with me? It's prophecy. You understand it, right? It's physical one. God bless you. But when I speak in tongues, I am activating the spiritual world. What is the kingdom of God to the kingdom of man? I'm bringing the heaven on earth. I'm communing with the supernatural to bring it to the natural. Look, every spiritual world, they have a language. Every spiritual world has a Look, computer has a language. Is it true or is it not true? Computer has a language. Account has a language. When you don't want somebody to understand what you are saying, what do you say? Oh God, oh God, let this brother hand over his car keys. Oh my God, so what are you paying for? You want Macaporo, Macabasu, Ketebe. The Holy Ghost said, That's why you said that. Hey, we give you a car keys. <laughs> Please, are you, are you here with me? Are you here with me? Now, between now and the next 10 days, I order everybody under the sound of my voice to speak in Beye tongues. Ah, you didn't hear me. Because you must activate your season. Do you know that when the day of Pentecost came, Peter changed from ordinary fisherman. A man who fears things to a man who stood there and within a day, 3,000 souls came to his church. Can you just imagine receiving 3,000 customers within a day? Lord, this business is not working. Change the gear to drive. Ikarama kodomo zigi neko lepile. Makadabo zigi digi dekadabadakadabakadabada. Hey, what are you doing? You can't help me, so I'm not talking to you. I have put my gear to drive. Hey, am I talking to somebody at all? Yes. Many believers speak in tongues only when we want to sleep. And the funny thing about tongue speaking is that you don't speak in tongues to bind demons. Every witch, every witch, fighting me, fighting me. I command them, I command them to go pray. You are a joker. They don't understand. So I said, but why do they run away? It's the fire that comes from you that makes them run. They will come back when you finish because they didn't hear anything. They didn't hear go away. So you see our people who go to church every day, ready, 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 ready. They clap their hands and pray in tongues for four hours. When they finish, they go home, they are still poor. Because demons don't understand that tongue speaking is between you and God. It's, every angels don't understand. It's a direct line. Enscripted. This WhatsApp line is enscripted, if you understand what I'm saying. If I call you, you can't get in. There's no call waiting in this thing. There's no call divert. It is direct between you and God. The language that God understands is you are speaking in tongues. That one, your heart is communicating with God. And that is what most of us don't do. Romans chapter 8. 
Verse 26. So we are going to speak in tongues today. You, you understand me? You are going to do what? Yeah, we are just going to blast in tongues. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our heart weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. That means that your normal prayer, you don't know how to pray. Oh God, help me in my situation. Oh God, if you will touch Kwekwe's heart, God knows that Kwekwe doesn't have money. He's just doing two. No, everything is wearing is borrowed. <laughs> the one who has the money is the one you don't know. But so God touched Kwekwe's heart. He said, "For you don't know how. We, um, for we do not know what we should pray for. Ask God, but the Spirit Himself makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So stop mentioning names." And go into the spirit and pray in the spirit. Sometimes I pray in the spirit. When I pray in the spirit, some names start coming. I jot them down. Ideas start coming. I jot them down. Things start coming. I jot them down. I don't stop the prayer. I jot them down. When I finish the prayer, then I begin to think through this ones. Then I, when I think about this one stuff, I say, guy, we last one, yeah, me. And I say, okay, Lord, quick, as I pray, say, more revelations are coming. Then you are writing it down. Am I talking to somebody here at all? Am I talking to somebody here at all? You are not here at all. Are you here? You are not here. I was with, um, I think Clement was there. Take your seat. We went to Asamangese about two or three weeks ago, and a guy was worrying us for money. I said we shouldn't give. And he was still worrying us for money. I said we shouldn't give. So as the guy was still worrying, I began to speak in tongues with him. And I felt in my spirit that if he, I will give him money. He must use God. And all of a sudden, the guy said, you give me money and I'll say a word of blessing over you. And all of a sudden, I said, they should give him money. And the guy said, God should bless you people. God. He was drunk, but that one, I took it. I took it. Because I sensed in my spirit that what the guy says will work. So in that same way, if maybe we didn't give him money, I said, stupid people, maybe stupidity will come to us. It won't work, but it will worry me. It's better you don't face stupidity than you face like than you face a blessing. And in everything you must speak in tongues. What did I say? I didn't hear you. When Jesus was on the cross, what did he say? Early, early, Lama Sabbath, early. What did the people say? They didn't understand what he was saying. Some said he's speaking to God. Some said he was speaking to them. But he said, My God, my God, why has that forsaken me? Look at which language are you speaking? So we have kingdom language. What do we call it? I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. If you can't speak a kingdom's language, you can't understand a kingdom's culture. Mama, I got true or false. You are queen mother. If you want to understand everybody's culture, their culture can be understood by their language. If you understand their language, you can understand their culture. So if you're a Christian and you don't speak in tongues, I pity you. We are all going to war. Are you looking at me? You're me. I'm using machine gun. You are using knife. Eradi our boss robots are say. Two men in era. Eradi me da wa se da. Eradi and then you bri. Wa fa se kai we na ba ba konto kwa. Brother man, e karama bon taki mron si ke da ba de si. But me, when I pray my normal prayer, I get answers. Yes, knife can kill. But bomb can finish. <laughs> do you understand me? So are you ready for some prayer? Yes. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I say, God, I want to enter my season. I just want to enter my season. Any word that will make me enter my season, I want to prepare me for my season. And when you do that, that's what the disciples ask. Will you now restore? He said, nobody knows the season that it is in the Father. But the answer to that season is you have the power of the Holy Spirit. Begin to talk to God. Someone say, Pastor, I don't speak in tongues. So then begin to thank God. Don't force tongues. But if you speak, don't do... Anybody who speaks a language within the mouth doesn't speak the language. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Mossamo Hayabo Mossamo Abrina Mossamo E é minha me da da o nemeja mosumu ohi azeni na sotomfo oni yente te buafo pa kamo no mada kadaba oni yenkwan chefo pa oni yedi mafo Asira ni aye ji njom na mi ze be ma wo e raze mi si de mi ni wa ye makada saba azi ni na sutunfo ye ti ti bu afo pa oni me pa chafo pa Oni mi ti ma fo asida ya ye ye jona mi se ba ma wo eh wo ate mi si de mi ni wa ye azeni na sutunfo yo ni mi ti ti bo afo pa Oni me kwan chere fo pa Oni me ti ma fo Lord I must enter my news I am tired I am weary I don't even know what to do again because my season has elapsed it has ended I'm done with this season I'm tired of this season that is why I don't know what to do. I get up in the morning I don't know what to do next because this season is done with I wake up and I I I don't know what to do again. I go to work but I don't feel it. I don't feel it. There's something new there. I go to work. Yes, it's true. I receive my salary, but it's like it doesn't have any meaning to me again. What is next for me, Lord? Ya bado sa dene, bade ba. Zigidi ba planta madikata patikete. Lick it up, petrol. As in you now, ah, as in you now, ah, so to fool. Yente te boa for pa. Onkwani me kwa, shre for pa. Onkwani me jima for. Maroba kote bedebe. Ziki di bada blantari bide 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 bide. Bra kada bada kada bada 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 bada. Zakada. I gada bagada 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 gada bada 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 zikide branta di bikete benta di bide bide ine de kete bikete bikete bide zakapa pur rakata pa rakata zikite bom pari bikete ben likete branta di bide bide bah zikite bikete bide bide ben likete bide i gada will you Lord tell me will you now restore my home. Will you not restore my marriage? Will you not restore my life? Will you not restore my business? No, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons. But it shall come to pass. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, that you shall be filled with power and you will be my witness. Rakadun zakete rampampa lakata pakata kata barisa zubeketo nekete pedo zinderi bendere ba lipom paron zakira bara Berikan di antara kian dari pilihan, zukuru beku tapi ketemedebe, lebaka ban tadi bision tadi bini bini be, repose kete peria tadi be, rakata bakata bakata bedebe, remali kata blan tadi bedebe. Yes, Lord, I'm married, but I need a child. It's a new season. Yeah, ha 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 ha. 
Ziki ticket. I, yes, I paid that rent, but I need my house. I want to move to my house. It must be a new season. Blast it, blast it. It must be a new season. You are discomforted. You are not happy. Because inside you, you must enter a new rent, a new season. if you don't speak in tongues, begin to talk to God in any usual life like that. <laughs> Blast it. Any trap set for you as you speak in tongues, God will expose it. He will reveal it. That is why the enemy fight has speaking in tongues. They say, oh, you are crazy. Yes. yes, I'm crazy. I need to be crazy. I am tired of my current situation. I want it better. I want it better. That is the touch you are speaking. Ne 
and you make them useful. So Lord, I accept that I'm not the best, but you qualify the disqualified. I'll show me into my season. <laughs> The priest can say you are drunk. He said, Lord, I am tired of the season. I am tired of this season. 
Natalie, I want to be a witness. I want to be a witness. I want to be a witness. I want to be a witness of your goodness. I want to be a witness of your glory. and the Bibles and the Lord remembered them. Hannah went to the Father who determined season. He bypassed the pastor and went to the pastor's pastor. Went to the creator of the pastor. Ronko Roman. I am not speaking to the man of God. I am speaking to my maker. I am speaking to my creator. Hey, all married women in this room, get ready. You are getting pregnant. All married women, you are getting pregnant. The anointing just descended. Hey, 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 it's answering you to that season. You feel the shaking in your system now. I must be a witness. I, I can't be talking about Jesus as a healer and I'm not healed. And I cannot be talking to people about a God who breaks people through and I cannot have a breakthrough. I hear you, 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 Amen. 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 Amen.